Hey, everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Friday edition of Today in Sports Betting. TGIF, Scott, you excited? Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to the bonus video later. We're going to be talking about the virtual Pro Bowl. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, no, actually. Uh, You're no not. football. No football going on for the first weekend in I don't even know how long, three, four months? Probably well, more. Because I mean, yeah, well, you had college, you know, that kind of segued. Yeah, yeah. so oh, about almost five months, I think. Five months, yeah. It's been a while. Uh, but looking forward to covering some basketball. And then we're going to be doing a, a video later on some Saturday stuff. I, I know you're thrilled about it, as I just saw from your facial expression. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we got a lot on the card, and hopefully we'll uh, make some money. Friday night basketball in the in the in the NCAA is generally not something I get too excited about. Although there are a couple of decent games for a change, you know, it's it's kind of a change from years past when you've had Ivy League and maybe the random MAC game or two, and that's been about it. I always like the random U Penn Cornell game on ESPNU at like eight eight o'clock. They were playing back to backs before it was cool, Scott. Where they were they playing, really were they were Friday, really ahead of their time. Friday night and Saturday afternoon in the Ivy League because you know mm-hmm. apparently we're studying the rest of the time. Uh, but of course, no Ivy League this year because they're smarter than the rest of us. So, I don't know. Uh, I got a couple decent games tonight, Scott. We got one big game, but we'll save that for a minute. We got another medium sized game with a couple teams that uh, probably will make the tournament. Uh, nothing you, is. You have game. one really on the fence, and the other one missed about a month and a half for COVID. And I feel like COVID, of course, is throwing a wrench in a lot of people's lives, but for the sake of the NCAA tournament selection committee, I don't know how you grade half of these teams. Good luck. I, I don't know. Because you look at one resume and one team might be like 10 and three. Yeah. Another team might be six and one. And it's like, I, I, I don't know which one's better. It's not their oh. fault that the entire team got infected. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a play today. I told you my, one of my premium plays, one of the teams is 12 and three. The other one's three and three. So I don't know. You know, right. That's that's it. You you make you make the best you, you make the best guess with the information you have. We we handicap just like we always do, but we we have even less information. Um, so this is the uh, it's the Richmond uh, it's the Richmond St. Louis game is the one I'm talking about there in the uh, in the A10. And uh, I assume that unless St. Louis implodes, St. Louis will make the tournament. Yeah, St. Louis. St. Louis should be. Uh, I guess nobody's a lock at this point, but well, some people are a lock. But they're a. Uh, they're seven and two. They're they're very they're a very good team. This Richmond team started off really well, Scott. Uh, the biggest win was against Kentucky, which is why I like this team to potentially be a sleeper candidate. Unfortunately, well, I didn't think that everybody would beat Kentucky this year. I was gonna say, what did we learn after that? Uh, Kentucky is uh, bad. That's they're how I'll not, put it. They're not. They're not good. They, uh, as the kids say, they suck. Um, yeah. So. so the point is Richmond and St. Louis, they kind of tried to challenge themselves out of conference play. And unfortunately the challenges they had turned out to be not very good teams because St. Louis beat LSU. Yeah. And I don't know how good LSU is. Uh, they're better than they were. It looks like, it looks like they've kind of turned into a team over the last month or so. I don't know. Yeah. But look at Richmond, yeah. Richmond lost to West Virginia, got killed in that game, beat Kentucky, which, I don't know, holds any type of merit at all. No, but you're, you know, you're scheduling well. If you're scheduling West Virginia, LSU, and Kentucky, you're not running from anybody. You know, it's not well, your Yeah, problem. Richmond didn't, didn't uh, schedule LSU, but just talk about both teams trying to challenge themselves. I mean, they beat Northern Iowa, who people thought were going to be good. Turned out to be awful. The win over Wofford and Loyola Chicago, though, I do think that those are pretty good wins because I do think that Loyola is pretty solid. Be Davidson they're, on the road. They get better uh, every game. You watch it. You watch that team, and they're just they just get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ram, the Ramblers up there for this one. Richmond's the home team. They're a one point favorite. Yeah, uh, one forty five is the number. Um, you got a uh, you got a, a ten and four Richmond team against a seven and two St. Louis team. St. Louis pretty pretty good team. Covering the spread, Richmond uh, eh, not so much seven and seven and seven on the year. Uh, what's the most surprising part of this uh, St. Louis team to you, Scott? There's one well, really. There's one I really feel good. like you just want to segue about the free throw shooting. So I'm just I do. Gonna do it. You know I do. Mm-hmm. They're shooting. They're shooting almost 72 percent from the line. That's just that's amazing for a team that shot in the, in the high 50s, low 60s last year. This team just could not make a free throw. So, yeah, I'm in, I'm impressed. What do you uh, what do you, what do you like about the uh, this game? I and mean, who do you like? So even though I do like this Richmond team, and I think the backcourt's very good. I do kind of have some issues with Richmond in this matchup. 
mostly because of the fact that Richmond is a lot of things, but a good, re- a good rebounding team is definitely not one of them because this team is awful on the boards. Richmond, according to rebound rate, is 305th in the country. That's not good. St. Louis, number they're, six. They're, they're what, six? Sixth. Yeah. So St. Louis might win this rebounding battle by 15. And I understand that home court has mattered to some teams so more than others. I think Richmond actually does pretty well in the home court. But Richmond hasn't won uh, – I'm sorry, St. Louis hasn't won a conference game yet this season because a lot of their games got canceled for COVID. But – I can't overlook that rebounding disparity there. St. Louis should dominate the boards. I expect them to eat at the foul line. I think they'll eat with a bunch of uh, second chance points, stuff like that. So even though I do like this Richmond team and I hope that Richmond wins because I do want them to make the tournament, I got to look at St. Louis here. Yeah, this is a, a St. Louis team that uh, route rebounds their average opponent by, uh, by 11, 40, 41 to 30. And you're facing now a bottom 60 rebounding team in the country. It's not going to be pretty. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. This is a Richmond team that doesn't even average 30 rebounds a game. So I just, you know, I, 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 I do like them. Uh, the, I do like their backcourt better than I like to lose, but I just don't think they can make up the difference as far as second chance points goes, you know, in one team. And when we saw it yesterday, Scott, in a heartbreaking game, by the way, in the USC-Oregon State game, uh, where Oregon State uh, just finally got beat down by uh, USC's length. Mm-hmm. They were able to. Uh, they were able to just keep getting second chance points and, and deny the Beavers to get second chance points, and it uh, it made a difference in the end in a game that we still should have covered. But uh, did you wa- did you watch some of that game? I watched all of it. Man. It was how I good was is Mobley? Good, good. He's very. He was very good. Very good in that game. He'll probably um, be a top ten, top five pick. But I know that there are brothers there. I can't say I've actually seen USC play that much. I just know that the one big man apparently is very, very good. Yeah, he just he just dominated, you know. And the uh, the little guard for uh, for Oregon State pretty much kept him in it single handedly. Just mm-hmm. uh, I can't I can't think of his name, but had a great game. Just, just they just just couldn't get there. And if you saw that game, if you were if you were riding Oregon State, it was uh, I heard it was a brutal brutal beat. Uh, yeah, you know, not quite epic top five. Ran about it for a year kind of thing, but it was it was not good. You just kind of a uh, just they were should have covered should have covered anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm with you. I think this is I think this is a good number here uh, with this St. Louis team. I know everybody's kind of unsure about what exactly you have with them because they haven't played that many games. But um, yeah, I'm not going to have any action on it. But I do know that in addition to the rebounding edge, you also have to wonder about foul trouble because Richmond really is one guy who's a quality big man in Golden. And right. if he's going to get into foul trouble earlier in this game, which I think he might because a slew should dominate the boards, I mean, Richmond might be screwed. If, if Golden gets two fouls in the first eight minutes or so, I don't know what you do if you're Richmond. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Does it bother you – let me just play devil's advocate just for a second here. Does it, does it bother you that this uh, St. Louis team just lost to Dayton? That's a bad, that was a bad loss. Five-point loss is a nine-point favorite. Depends how much you factor in the layoff. I know that some people expect teams to suddenly pick up where they left off. Right. It was St. Louis's first game in over a month. Right. Dayton was coming in off of a pathetic showing against VCU where it got smacked over the weekend. I'm not going to put much stock into it. I know that St. Louis needs some time, especially with other teams, to actually get reacclimated. And it made sense that they got off to a very slow start in the first half as a result. So I'm actually not going to put much stock in it. I know that people are going to look at the schedule and say, oh, St. Louis lost to Dayton. Dayton's not very good, whatever. But I do think there were extenuating circumstances which explain why St. Louis struggled. Kind of like what we saw with Villanova against Seton Hall when we talked about that game about a week or so ago. Villanova probably should have lost the game, but it got off to a very slow start, and people thought, you know, Villanova, number three team in the country, what's the story? And it's like, no, they haven't played in three weeks. Right. I just think that there are a lot of other variables that people don't fully take into account. All right. Well, yeah, I I do. Uh, the, the only part that, that gives me slight pause is St. Louis got the out rebounded. They they rebounded. They had just thirty rebounds in that game, and got out round or got out rebounded by Dayton. So, I think we'll um, both agree that that will not happen against Richmond. In this I game. don't. I just I can't see how it was. They they didn't shoot well from three point land, and they uh, they let they let uh, they let Dayton shoot forty four percent from downtown. So, mm-hmm. um. 
But I, I, having said all that, I'm just, you know, like I said, just, just kind of looking at both sides here. The rebounding is just too glaring for me. I agree. I agree. I just think this is a team that's just going to get after it on the glass, and that's going to ultimately make the difference. Give me uh, give me St. Louis minus the one. You got any feelings on the total? I think you mean the plus the one and a half. What's that? Oh, yeah. The, the that's what, I'm sorry. Yeah, plus one. Yeah. I'm assuming that's another spot like the Seton Hall game we talked about with Creighton where you're just going to take uh, St. Louis money line. Instead of the plus one and a half. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, I've got. I've, yeah, I've got it at, at bet online at uh, plus one, plus one hundred, or I can just take it straight up at plus one hundred five. So that makes sense. Just take the plus hundred, then I guess. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the thing. Normally, I'm going to take. Normally, mm-hmm. I'm going to take the money line there, but for a nickel, I'll take the point. I'll, yeah, I'll that's fair. Get rid of the push. Mm-hmm. One forty-five. What do you think? Uh, for this one, I'll lean to the over. At the end of the day, I have the theory that Richmond's going to get into foul trouble early and often in this game. I know St. Louis kind of reverted back to its terrible free throw shooting in the last game, shooting about 58% against Dayton. But if you're looking at one of these teams potentially being in the bonus with, I don't even know, 10 minutes left in the half, 11 minutes left in the half, Possibly, I got yeah. to lean to the over because they're going to get a ton of clock stoppages. Yeah, I would say at least one of the halves, they're going to be, they're going to be in the bonus with more than eight minutes left. Yeah. So. All right, my friend. That's a uh, that's a nice little uh, nice little appetizer there for the uh, for the main event. The main event, Scott, is a slugfest there in the Big Ten as the uh, uh, two I teams go out of the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes and the Illinois Fighting Illini. A battle there in Champagne. Um, I know you gave out a play today on this matchup. I did. I gave out a, a play of the day on a, a first half. Uh, Illinois is uh, currently minus two in this one. The total is 161 and a half. <sighs> Scott, who's going to win the battle of the big men here? So for this one, I think that it will be kind of even. I think Garvo, Garza should have more points because he scores more than Coburn. Right. But I do really like Coburn. I think Coburn's a very good player. So I, I think, think that – going to be an, a better NBA player. Uh, I think Coburn is going to be the better NBA player. That's what I'm I, saying. Yeah, that's what I mean. he's only a he's only a sophomore, and he learned a lot. If you go back and watch some of his tape from last year, he is a lot better player this year than he was last year. Yeah, the issue I have with Garza in the next level is he's just not fast enough. He doesn't have any quickness, which I think is going to kill him on the perimeter. When you have to start guarding people who can actually stretch the floor, Garza right. is a lost cause. Like you can't he, if you run pick and roll against him, he's basically screwed. I, I think you'd agree with that. Uh, he certainly hasn't uh, done much to encourage us to think the other way. This he just doesn't have lateral quickness, which, I mean, some very good defensive players in the league have that issue because uh, you don't want Gobert, for example, on the perimeter. But I just think Garza's defense is not great. I think Coburn is definitely the better defender. And rebounding-wise, I think they're pretty even. Yeah. So I, I think that Garza, of course, has better range from the outside. But the issue that I simply have here with Iowa is the fact that I just – I mean, it's most it's the same thing as most of these Big Ten teams, but you have to wonder, what the hell was that against Indiana in the last game? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, they were they were they clicking right along. They had a little stumble, and they were they were they were back, and they they looked like they were back to form, clicking right along, and all of a sudden they just lose that game just inexplicably uh, to a, a, a very underwhelming Indiana team. And it was also at home. I mean, it was one of those situations where Iowa was – rolling through the conference schedule as a home game against Indiana and Indiana is not very good. I've seen yeah. them play and yet they just couldn't do anything. Now question about Illinois is this team has struggled at home lately. They That's got lost. a bunch of shitty losses like that. Yeah. I lost to Maryland by three lost to Ohio, Ohio state is a good team, but Ohio state was missing a bunch of people and right. Illinois still lost that game despite being three and a half point favorites. Uh, ended up beating Penn State. I think everybody's beaten Penn State this year, so I'm not going to factor that in too much. Having said all that, uh, I'll go with Illinois. Uh, but I think Illinois being favored in the spot is pretty telling to me. The issue I have with Iowa is defensively, I just think this team's not very good. Uh, you want to talk about all the players they have with Bohannon, uh, with Frederick, who's questionable for this game. Just go through the line. This defense is borderline non-existent at times. And yeah, I think, I think Illinois – has some options there because the Sun Mu uh, is don't get me wrong a very good scorer, but I think he's an underrated on ball defender. Uh, I think Trent Frazier is pretty good as well on ball. I just think Illinois is the better defensive team. They also have Coburn who is averaging 1.5 blocks per game. 
And I just think at the end of the day, Iowa is going to struggle keeping Illinois' faster and more athletic guards out of the out of the paint. And I think that's going to be the story of the game. So I like that Illinois. Is, that is a, the glaring stat for Iowa is they, they give up over 83 points a game on the road. And that's mm-hmm. just – that's not good. That is that is just not a number that is going to give you any kind of success in the postseason. And would it shock me if it, if Iowa won the game? No, because it's a very talented team. But you just right. go through the line here. I think you'll agree that whether or not Illinois is the better team, it destroys Iowa in the athletic department. Uh, yeah, it really it really does. Um, and you know you got some pretty gaudy stats there with with Iowa as far as their offense goes, where they, you know where they average ninety points a game. But you go back and look at that. Uh, they put up some serious numbers against just, you know, dreadful teams that are getting factored in there. They dropped 90-plus against Western Illinois. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. So, um, they're averaging a little closer to about 84-and-a-half in conference play. And when you're, give, when you're giving up 83, that's just not a recipe for success. I've got I to gotta go with you. I'll take, I'll take the home team here. Um, as we've talked about, the home, the home court advantage hasn't been as dramatic as it was in years past, of course, with no fans. It still makes a difference because you've got travel, you've got routine, uh, things like that. Um, I think I think Garza gets a little taste of what it's going to be like to play in the NBA next year, and uh, I think it. Uh, I don't think it goes particularly well. I'll take uh, I'll take Illinois as well. You got any thoughts on the total there, Scott? Well, I know a lot of money's coming on the under. Um, yeah, the truth number. is, I am a little bit. Uh, I'd say. I don't, I don't know, puzzled by that line move. I think that the line opened up too high. That I'll agree with. Uh, but I guess I think this line should be in the high 150s. I think 161 and a half is a little bit too high at this point. Right. I'll lean to the under. Would I play the under? Hell no. Because I think that these two teams in the second half, you might see a lot of chaos. But I'll lean under, I guess. But I do think Illinois should get the job done. This game will be a nail biter throughout it. I don't think one team's going to roll. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone in Iowa can guard the Sun, uh, the Sun Wu, and I think he's going to have a huge game. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably pretty close to right. So, yeah, that's a, and I kind of made fun of that on my video about how you know everybody's talking about the matchup in the middle, but uh, you're kind of forgetting that these teams have some very good guards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Illinois, especially, just has a lot of depth at that position, and I think that's going to be ultimately make the difference in this one. So, especially if Frederick's not able to go for Iowa. Yeah, that's huge. Um, anything else? Get your attention here for for tonight's action. Uh, well, looking through the card here, um, I feel like I kind of have. I know that these teams are awful, but I think Kansas City is a next level awful team. You know they usually are. Um, who they got tonight? North Dakota State, another awful. North Dakota State's very bad, but North Dakota State also seems to always, I don't know, I'd say, get it together in conference play. And after such an abysmal start to the regular season. It is 7-1 in conference play, so North Dakota State doing classic North Dakota State things of randomly running through the conference and winning the conference tournament to make, to make it and then playing the 16-seed game, which seems to be their usual MO. I, I like North Dakota State minus the three there. I just think that UMKC isn't very good, and I think that San Diego State I – mean, sorry, not San Diego State. North Dakota State should be able to do enough in order to get the job done here especially since it's averaging roughly three, uh, roughly five more rebounds per game. I just think that North Dakota State's going to dominate the boards, and I think that uh, UMKC is uh, bad. That's how I'll phrase it. Here's the weird thing about this UMKC team. They play defense. They, this is the, the first time in a long time where they really, really play good defense. They're uh, – uh, I think they're top ten in the nation in points allowed. They give up, they give up just about 62 points a game. They, and uh, the problem is, obviously – when you're six and nine and you play great defense, uh, you ain't got much of an offense. And they are uh, definitely, uh, they're not, that are, uh, and it's weird. If you look at their stats, they're a pretty good shooting team. They shoot, they shoot, you know, 50, they shoot 53% from, from the field. They shoot 38% yeah. from downtown, but they just, they just, they're slow as molasses. They play half court. And uh, that's the issue I have that they play half court, but we just talked about St. Louis and Richmond. Now there's a huge rebounding issue there. North Dakota state's 22nd in rebounding rate. And if you look at UMKC, uh, they're 201st, I believe. So in, in when you're playing this half-court, it's very, very slow style. If you're going to force the pace to a crawl and then give up second and third chance points here, yep. you're, it's going to be a long evening. Okay. So I think that the rebounding edge once again, plus the fact that North Dakota State is dominating conference play once again, 
That total is crazy, by the way. It dropped from 127 and a half to 120. Yep. Uh, which is I just got nuts. I got but it. I, I can't back UMKC. I just don't think the team's very good. And I've still got it at 122. So still, I dropped like five points or so. But it's the fact that the game will be slow as molasses, as you said. And I think that in that environment, if you're not generating any second chance points, yeah. you're going to have some problems. Yeah, you could do you could do worse than uh, back UMKC uh, to lose in most in most situations. So, yeah. Um, and I talked about a game, and I've got a, I've got a premium on a uh, on a Big West game. And there's another Big West game I like. I just didn't have the heart to put two Big West games on the premium uh, side. But you got to be more like me, where I just ignore all the advice on playing mainstream games, and I just specialize well, in these. I find I like what I like. You know, you you I find what I find. You know, that's that's I don't. I've been trying to teach you that that's my philosophy for months. Is that what you've been trying to teach me? Uh, yeah, and then you tell me that the ratings need to be higher. That's the thing. I mean, it's 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 one it's thing. It's different for premium than it is. I'm messing absolutely. with you. I, absolutely. I, I yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I, I like this. I like this Cal Irvine team. Uh, they're first first place out there in the Big West. Uh, they're playing on the islands against Hawaii, which is the reason this spread is a little lower than it should be. But I like the uh, I like Cal Irvine right there. Uh, Given give it two and a half to uh, Hawaii. If you if you need a late night catch up game because it is the last game on the card. That's a uh, that's a mid, that's a midnight Eastern start time. Mm-hmm. So if you need a little Friday night action, uh, if you've had a cocktail or two and uh, the wife went to bed early, uh, you could do worse than to put your money on uh, on Irvine there. The hardest part that I found with the Big West is you can never find an actual stream for the games. Yeah, it's it's hard. I really wish there was because I would love to watch, especially all the degenerates. I don't know how many people would actually be watching the game. I think more than people think. Yeah. Yeah, when it's the only thing on, we'll, we'll, we'll watch it, man. Yep, especially with no UFC on or anything this weekend. You have a bunch of potential <laughs> Big West games to have a decent amount of viewership because people aren't staying up to watch pay-per-view stuff you can just watch regular college basketball there a line on the pro bowl anywhere scott have you seen anything well considering the fact that there is no actual pro bowl uh well i know but i mean we've had we had line on esports the whole time there's a virtual pro bowl which i saw a line for you have seen it for, for the virtual one i did i haven't seen it what's it listed under i completely forgot i okay. i i looked at it briefly i th- i think the efc was favored by like two and a half or something i think look at that how could you just not play the points there? I'm not even sure. I think that's what it was. I don't really remember, but I do remember that it was fully virtual. They decided to elect people to the Pro Bowl because you have bonuses and stuff and contracts, but they're not actually going to be playing the game. So right, right, right. Uh, plus, they have no stadium. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they weren't playing in Hawaii this year. Where are they playing? Uh, they moved it from Hawaii to Florida a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, I thought they were. I thought they were changing it around. I thought they were moving it. I, th- around. I think they should have kept it in Hawaii. Well, they condemned that stadium, so they can't really do that. Put move it to Aloha. No, not this year. I mean, just in in the last couple of years. I don't know why they ever moved it from. Aloha. I agree. I agree. What little incentive those guys had to go play in the bowl game is now gone. It's like you get to go to Florida. Are you serious? I travel to Florida at least once a year to play the Dolphins or the. Or the I was going to say, good news, Dolphins fans. Yeah, it's just uh, Hawaii. At least is an experience. You get to go somewhere. Yeah, you take the family. You lay on the yeah. beach for a week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I I don't know. I think when you see a bunch of players that decide not to play in the Pro Bowl, and they would have been more inclined to play in Hawaii. But now they can sit on their couch and see their virtual player throw for 500 yards. Um, got the Senior Bowl tomorrow. I'm, I'm excited to watch that. I don't I don't want to I don't want to bet it. Of course, it, it's a pick 'em in 41. Your total. Good luck. But uh, 41. Oh God. This is this is a game that is going to mean a lot because there's a lot of these guys that uh, sat out for the year. I didn't know that they were running the veer in the in the senior bowl with the single, total single four. wing, single wing, buddy. Yeah, single wing there. I wasn't aware that they brought all of Army's team and all of uh, Navy's coaching staff, and they just decided to play against each other. They got a couple of guys they want to take a really good look at at spinner back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but that's it. Should be a good game. It's two thirty Eastern time. Um, you're going to see a lot of people play that didn't play this season. So that 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 will be fun just to see these guys that, that didn't play all year. I'm now. hoping Jamar Chase is there, which I'm assuming he will be, but I don't know the answer to that. As far as I know, I, I've been watching a couple of the practices. It's uh, it's been fun to watch. So <laughs> that's about that's about it for for you football junkies. That was kind of my point for if you're in complete if you're if you're in complete football withdrawal, you do have one option, and that is the uh, the Senior Bowl tomorrow, two thirty Eastern time. So or you can uh, move to Europe and change the name of your sport to football. I believe Otherwise. they had it first. I'm just. I believe they did too. I'm saying in your own terminology. 
Fair enough. Uh, everybody likes a contrarian, Scott. That is definitely true. Or is it? Um, that's going to do it for us. By the way, if you're looking for more information on these games or any other games this weekend, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandwinders.com. Deep dives into every game every single day. Always there, always free. Winnersandwinders.com. And uh, for you guys, we appreciate you watching. Hope wish you nothing but the luck. Nothing but the best of luck to starting tonight and all weekend long. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money. Back at the window. You guys have a great day. Uh, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us at Winners and Winners, appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, stick around. We'll see you on the uh, NBA side on today in sports betting. Take care, everybody. Clip.